The main reason most people consider Chaos Knights with Lances the worst elite shock cavalry in the game is they are basically the only ones without healing. And before you say Dread Knights, no, Dread Knights are not shock cavalry, they're melee cavalry. There's an important difference being that shock cavalry relies largely on its charge bonus. That the Chaos Knights do have some of the best, 80 charge bonus, absolutely insane. Their weapon strength is okay, 15 armor piercing is decent, 40 to attack, 34 defense isn't great. And 120 armor is, but no other defensive stats like physical resistance, unlike, say, Grail Knights or Dragon Princes. There's obviously, again, no healing, and especially no model resurrection, like Blood Knights, and again, literally of every other Elite Shock Cavalry. Um, so a lot of people do consider them, because of those reasons, not that great. What they do have going for them, though, is, again, that super high charge, great armor. Uh, they've got more HP baseline, I believe, than any other Elite Shock Cavalry. We'll look at that later, but... Um, yeah, as a result, you know, maybe they don't need as much healing, depending on that difference in HP. But uh, here, this is a replay from the Warhammer World Cup. We've got Stormrunner up against Exploding Hamster. Exploding Hamster, uh, German player, very good guy. Also a content creator, I believe, uh, in German as well. Up against, yeah, Sigvald here. So we've got Sigvald, Chosen with Halberds, couple of Forsaken. Up front, some Marauders. Um, Got some Rotter Horsemen throwing axes as well, some Poison Hounds, one unit of Poison Hounds already got routed off by the Royal Altar of Griffites, which are here, as well as Carl Franz. We've got uh, Outriders with Grenade Launchers, Pistoliers, uh, Spearmen with Shields, Lifecaster. Pretty straightforward Empire build, lots of Skirmish Cavalry. But let's see, this is a little bit of a small map to be trying to kite and, you know, really take advantage of that. But so far, Empire's been seeing off the kind of mobility counter mobility threats which means they probably should be able to operate relatively free so let's see how that plays out now the the shock cavalry here are just being kept back right now and stormrunner has paired them with something that i think is uh probably i'm gonna make a video soon about this spell but it's probably one of my favorite spells in the entire game that is plague of rust especially overcast minus 60 armor minus 30 on the regular cast and make something like these Chaos Knights with Lances, which don't have the best AP, but massive overall damage, deal significantly more to something like, say, these uh, Altor Griffites, who at 125 armor are going to be relatively resistant to the charge of Chaos Knights. Of course, we've got these Chosen with Halberds in here supporting, which could potentially make a difference as well. But Grenade Launchers going off in the background, getting at these Forsaken. Forsaken, though, is kind of blitz on the Empire Infantry line. There's not a lot of infantry here. Forsaken will deal a lot of damage, but here we go. Knights charge in. We've got that Plague of Rust active, and you can see the uh, Altorker fights take an alarming amount of damage. Uh, they're going to get a regrowth and immediately pull away. Carl jumps in with all of his buffs. Stand your ground, you know, uh... uh Reichlon, Runefang, all that jazz, so juicing up this blob pretty considerably, but it's really not helping all that much. Royal Alt of Griffites still getting shredded here, and uh, chose it's, I mean, it's three units, right, that are all about 1,500 costs, give or take, so, yeah, Chosen with Halberds and the Knights with Lances, pretty convincingly winning that fight. Royal Alt of Griffites forced to pull away and burn that regrowth as well. They do come in rear charge, and oh, that's a big deal, the Lifecaster got caught up, by Sigvald, so there's no healing on the Empire's side. Definitely res uh, removes a major aspect. Likewise, uh, Stormrunner's been pushing this flank here pretty aggressively with the Hounds he does still have left uh, that came back from route, and some Rada Horsemen as well, kind of pushing those Outriders and Skirmish troops away so they can't have much an effect. And the Chaos Knights just following up on these Royal Altar Prep fights, and I'm not that big of a fan of the Royal Altar Prep fights anymore. They used to be pretty good in the meta, in my opinion, but now. Uh, they oftentimes, because of their cost, just get heavily outnumbered like this. And right now, just facing off against overwhelming force of Chaos Knights. There's just way too many Chaos Knights for them to even try and deal with here. They definitely will lose out over time. They're going to acquit themselves reasonably well. They'll get some damage in. But uh, the Knights, yeah, only 34 melee defense is also, again, not amazing. We'll have to look at some other Shock Cavalry. Maybe it's actually pretty good in comparison. Shock Cavalry generally doesn't have the best melee defense and should be used in cycle charging more than anything, but Arl comes in, trying to get some tear routes to pull things back here, bail out some of his skirmish cav, which he largely does, uh, manages to route those Marauder Horsemen, the uh, Hounds also immediately just route off the side there, the Forsaken actually following up relatively well though, but there's nothing really left to deal, deal with Sigvald except Cycle Charge from Carl. now can Carl actually do it is the question, Carl himself, 100 armor up on 
uh, Deathclaw, if he gets Plague of Rusted, like here, we're going to get another Overcast Plague of Rust on these Empire Knights, which they do have a lot of armor. They're, they probably would have lost that anyway horribly, but they just get devoured here by those Chaos Knights. It's absolutely insane amounts of damage. Outriders are firing in here from the flank, doing some okay damage, but Chaos Knights, of course, do have Missile Block Chance, regular 35%, I believe, which is pretty decent. 30%, yeah, that's okay. Considering how big their shields are, you'd think it'd be maybe a little bit better, but that's alright. Chosen taking a few grenade launchers here. But at this point, the balance of power, Empire's just lost out on a lot of value. Arl's still here. But a lot of the skirmish cav have been dealt with. Basically, most of the infantry has gone, aside from these two very tattered units of spears. And the Chaos Knights... Taking some damage. Sigvald, though, and the Chosen basically untouched at this point. And the Chosen with Halberds especially going to be a huge, huge problem uh, for Franz. It, you know, he could, in theory, cycle charge Sigvald, probably. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the Empire going to pull up for a stand here, try and get some isolated engagement, maybe take out some of these Marauders. But these Spearmen are going to get walloped because of the way the kind of character attacks work like the <laughs> the I believe their bracing bonus was probably broken already because they were fighting the what's his name this guy <laughs> sorcerer with his cool staff I have to say it's probably one of my favorite staff designs for any caster that like kind of scythe staff looking thing looks appropriately zinchi but anyway yeah they would have got the, the spearmen there with their bracing bonus getting broken because they all kind of turned to face him, I believe. I don't know if that's 100% how it works, but it looks like that's probably how it worked there. Sigvald now gets combat against Carl. Carl, just like I said, going to get that Plague of Rest. You see as the Chaos Knights kind of counter charge back in here. Sigvald, of course, doing quite a bit of damage as well. But, uh, yeah, Chaos Knights racked up some value, honestly. One of the best games I've seen from them in recent memory. Um, I didn't completely love Exploding Hamster's build, I'm going to be honest, from an Empire player's perspective i think you know carl's a good idea in this matchup but oftentimes since sigvald's so present now i would maybe even consider going a different route because carl really his role is to kill shagos right um i don't know you might want him as insurance just in case of shagos anyway but it's a lot of skirmish cav on that small map you know it's tough tough to make it work well alter crit fights are again okay but they struggle to be cost effective like here they got quite a bit of damage value but still didn't even pay for themselves I mean, granted, Exploding Hamster did also lose his caster, which is a pretty big deal. Um, but yeah, these Chaos Knights, man, 1,800 value, damage value, and 1,600 damage value on the two of them is impressive damage, I have to say. Um, if deployed in the right situation at the right time, they can, uh, you know, end someone's day very quickly. But their day can also get ended very quickly. There's a lot of things that, you know, you're good at killing enemy cavalry, uh, or I should say heavy cavalry. Um, yeah, Sigvald, though. Get some good damage in as well. Sigvald, very, very strong right now. You'll probably see him most of the time if you're up against Chaos, so just be aware of that. Forsaken also, pretty good value here. Forsaken can be good against the Empire as long as they don't get shot or charged to the face too much before they get into combat against state troops. But they do trade very well against state troops. Um, yeah, the Knights, obviously. Horsemen also doing a great job kind of countering the uh, Empire's skirmish mobility here. And you can see Pistolier, some of them doing okay in terms of value. One of them did not. One of the Outriders got some great damage, but the rest of them just had a little bit of a hard time really utilizing their ammo effectively. Didn't quite get to where they needed to be in terms of damage output. It's just the story of a lot of these units here. Uh, the Empire Knights and the, the Spearmen, you might not expect to get a lot of damage in, but yeah, the rest of the units where you'd expect the damage to come from, just not quite there. Same with Carl. It's not the damage value that you're looking for. But uh, yeah, just for some quick comparisons about Chaos Knights with Lances... They are definitely solid, don't get me wrong, and when used appropriately can be very good, but just be aware that they're relatively expensive. 1500 is definitely in the realm of elite shot cavalry, and if we just kind of compare here to some others, um, I can pull up you. Well, yeah. Demigriff Knights are slightly different because they're monstrous cavalry, but they're still somewhat comparable. Really, though, I should be looking at, uh, where is it, High Elves. For Dragon Princes. Dragon Princes, out of all these, are probably the closest comparison because they're non anti large. Um, yeah, 900 more HP baseline, but keep in mind that regrowth, like one single regrowth, is more than that in terms of HP. Yeah, one regrowth is 1392. So one regrowth onto your Dragon Princes or, you know, like Alario for healing as well. If we look here, uh, you get the full effect. 
from Star of Avalon, that's a thousand hit points. That already makes up the difference in HP between Dragon Princes and Chaos Knights with Lances. And given that Dragon Princes are a very likely healing target, it is pretty safe to kind of add that in there. Um, so already Chaos Knights with Lances are down on that front, even with the extra HP they have over uh, Dragon Princes. Same charge bonus. Chaos Knights have slightly more weapon strength, slightly better baseline stats, but of course they don't have Martial Mastery. No physical resistance, although slightly better armor. They do have less leadership too, which 74 leadership for unit this expensive. It might not seem that bad, but it's actually not amazing. Um, yeah, Grail Knights, I guess uh, 80 leadership is better. They have less armor, but again, physical resistance, less HP, but again, not more than one regrowth's worth of HP. A um, little bit better stat-wise overall for the Chaos Knights, just a little bit better charge, attack, defense, everything. But, of course, they have no anti-large bonus. They have no perfect Vigor as well, which is huge. Vigor is very, very massive in a lot of uh, late-game situations. 12 bonus versus large kind of makes up for their difference in stats against large targets. Magic damage also situationally very, very strong. Um, immune to Psychology, which the Chaos Knights do not have. Chaos Knights do cause fear. They're not immune to Psychology. Uh, Blood Knights, of course, not really in a comparison, because Blood Knights can literally heal models, which is insanely powerful. Um, so, I mean, stat-wise, they're relatively comparable, but, uh, yeah, Blood Knights are just insane <laughs> because of Vampire Healing. So, yeah, as a result, these are kind of the four, like, main units I would compare in terms of Elite Shock Cavalry. They're the ones that immediately spring to mind. I don't know, you know I mean, maybe you consider, like, uh, again, Demigriff Knights, Necropolis Knights, some of those kind of monstrous cavalry in a similar, ca in a similar class. A little bit different, but even then, like, those guys also have access to healing. Tomb Kings, tiny bit, but technically they do, right? So, um, Necropolis Knights don't count as Constructs, they count as, uh, do, or do they? Oh, they do actually count as Constructs, yeah, so you can heal them with, uh, Restores from a Necrotect. Although they won't be getting the benefit of this right here. Um, oh no, it does affect Constructs, that's right, Restless Dead. So yeah, you can't even get a little bit of healing from this as well, just not the Realm of Souls, I believe. But uh, anyway, food for thought. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again, we'll see you next time.